Hey everybody, welcome back to Dave's Small Engines. This past summer I did a video test um, with my chainsaw comparing the temperature differences between a 25 to 1 uh, oil and fuel mixture and a 50 to 1 oil and fuel mixture. Well, there's been a lot of discussion on that topic and on that video and I'll put that link um, either here or here or maybe down in the description um, if you missed that video. Um, but uh, I think it's a pretty neat topic and I really enjoyed putting that test together. Another test that I'm interested in doing is pretty simple. You know what it's like. You, uh, you take your bottle of steel oil or Husqvarna oil or Red Max oil or whatever oil it is and you poke the cap maybe with a knife or if you've got a longer thumbnail or maybe use your teeth, I don't know, hopefully not your teeth, and you dump it in your gallon or your uh, 5 liters or 4.7 liters or whatever mixture you want. So it made me wonder, okay, there's been some times where, you know, you puncture this and maybe there's a little bit of oil left over in here, or maybe the best practice might be shaking it or, you know, letting it sit in the cap for a while. Or sometimes even in the past, I've actually added some fuel into here, flushed it around to make sure I got all of the oil out. So it got me thinking, what is the actual amount of oil that is coming out of one of these bottles? So today I'm going to run a test. I just picked up this um, measuring cup, I guess. It's probably for baking or cooking or um, whatever, but it's uh, probably not meant for doing this test. But either way, it has the appropriate markings for milliliters. So what I'm going to do is pour this like I normally would into here. Leave it for a couple seconds. I want to see exactly how much oil comes out of this bottle and ends up in this beaker. So I want to do two tests. A normal puncture with a finger, a dump in here, a little shake, and then let's see how much is in the bottle. And then the next test, I'm going to do this, clean everything out, put it all back in this bottle so I can use it later on, and then open this one again, dump it in there and leave it and see if there's an actual difference between the amount of oil that comes out if you let it sit versus if you just pour it quickly, you know, you're out on the job site, you need to cut some wood and you're not really, you know, spending a ton of time letting it drip out. And really, I'm curious. I want to know if I'm getting the perfect oil mixture. All of this talk between, you know, 40 to 1 and 45 to 1 and 50 to 1 or 47 to 1, that's all null and void unless you know exactly how much oil is coming out of the bottle and going into your can. So let's open some of these up and see what we get. Okay, so for the first test, I'm going to just puncture it, open it, dump it in quickly, couple shakes, and then discard it. Just like you normally would if you're out on the job site or getting ready to chop some wood. Okay, interesting. Let me take you a little bit closer here. We are actually at probably 104 mil, 102 mil. It's over 100 milliliters. Interesting. Okay, so what does that tell us? That our mixture is actually a little bit thicker than what we think it is. So that's just your standard two-stroke steel oil, 100 mils. You're actually getting it about 103, 104. Let me see if I can actually bring it even closer so it's level. There we go. So you be the judge. Looks about 103, 104 to me. Very interesting. All right, let's try the second test. Okay, let's put this back in here. I want to be able to reuse it. See how my pouring goes. I don't know. There's the one or two extra mil right there. So there truly will be 100 mils in this when I go to use it. Just so I don't forget or wonder why it's been opened, we'll go 100. All right. So now let's make sure this is completely cleaned out. 
I don't want it to affect any of our results. Fresh towel. There was no funny business going on. The towel's come up pretty much dry. We'll stick this end in. All right. So I'm confident now that that is clean and empty. And I'll set up for the second test. Okay, so let's do the same thing here, except we're gonna take our time, make sure this cut is absolutely perfect. All the way open, all the way bent down. And then we're gonna let it sit in there and see how much is actually in there if you take your time. So from my angle right now, and I'll show you guys in a second, it looks like there is about 108, 109. It's starting to slow down. Getting darn near close to 110 mil. That is interesting. And I'm wondering if they do this on purpose, right? An extra added fail safe to their 50 to one recommendation. Oh, lost the bottle. Nothing in there anyways. See, there's still some caught behind this uh, foil here, so. Couple more drops. Actually, look at that. So when it flipped out, I lost two drops on the left. There's actually even a little bit more. Now let me just make a cut. All right, I think that's pretty generous. Now from where I'm sitting, and I'll show you guys here, we are at just below 110 mil. Interesting. So that, oh, geez, fat finger. That's pretty telling. Almost 110 mil, and maybe, maybe if the bottle didn't flip off and I didn't lose, you know, this drop and this drop and this on the edge here, we'd have 110, but. That's pretty darn close. Now, before I ran this test, I spoke with my father, who's an engineer. Um, he wanted to uh, make it very clear that there would be some differences in the amount left over in the bottle um, if it was based on temperature. So just so everybody sees, 15.4 degrees for that. 14.9, let's go again here. 15.4. 14.9. A um, little bit warmer probably because it was in the warm jar here, but we're not talking a lot of difference in terms of heat. So what's even more interesting is this shop towel math that I've just done here. So at 100 milliliters of oil in 5 liters of fuel, your ratio is a perfect 50 to 1. As we saw with the quick pour from this bottle, 104 mil in 5 liters is actually 48 to 1. So it is a... 
um, it is a fatter mixture or a richer oil mixture. So going down the chart here, 109, which was what we did with the slow pour, um, was five uh, with five liters of fuel would be 45.9 to one, almost the 45 to one ratio. Now, 110 mil, which is quite possibly what we had if we didn't lose these drops over here, this little bit on the knife, um, so with five liters of fuel, 45 and a half to one. So yeah, I don't know if steel is doing this on purpose. I don't know if they're actually adding that much oil to their bottles or if it's maybe a manufacturing inconsistency, but the talk of 45 to one versus 50 to one could just be, you know, the difference between letting it drip out or being a little bit too quick on the trigger when you're, um, when you're dumping the oil into the can. All really interesting. Let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching the video, guys. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to make of these, uh, these results. It seems to me like there is a large inconsistency in the perfect 50 to 1 from what Steel recommends to the 45.5 to, uh, to 1 or 45.9 to 1. Uh, maybe there's a better way to deliver oil. Maybe it doesn't really matter. And <laughs> quite honestly, that's probably the way I'm leaning on this. If steel really doesn't care exactly how much is in here, maybe we shouldn't either. I don't know. But I think it kind of adds to the perfect oil fuel mixture debate. And um, maybe it'll change the way uh, some of you guys do business when you're mixing your oil and your fuel. As I said, let me know what you think. Uh, I think this is a pretty cool little test. I had a lot of fun putting it together for you guys. Uh, let me know um, your thoughts in the comments. Let's talk about it. Maybe there's uh, some room for improvement from Steel or Husqvarna, whoever uh, delivers the oil. It'd be actually interesting to see if Husqvarna is a little bit more consistent. Um, you can only imagine that these are mass produced. Um, but hey, yeah, that was fun. Take care. Hope to see you soon.